To them, Jelani didn't mean anything. There's no effort. There's no push. There's no nothing that was being done about my son. I, I did all that lab work. Me and my kids, me and everybody that never knew Jelani, my family, friends, strangers, did all the legwork. <laughs> my son didn't get any type of help. <laughs> and I'm pissed. <laughs> because he didn't deserve this. 25-year-old Illinois State University graduate student Jelani Day deserved better. The young black student missing for about a month before his family got any answers. His body identified almost 20 days after it was found. You just heard from Jelani's mother, Carmen Bolden Day, in an interview she did with CNN. She says those tasks to help her bring Jelani home didn't work hard enough or fast enough. He said to me, do you want to know if this is your son or not? <sighs> they were so rude to me. For the past month, the Day family has been searching for Jelani, who was classified as a missing person. As of Thursday, Jelani's case is no longer a missing persons case. But his family says the case is not closed and they still need help. The first concern was finding Jelani. Now, we need to know what happened to him. A look at the search for Jelani Day. What we know so far about his case. The questions still unanswered. And the glaring disparities between when a white person goes missing and a person of color. I'm Brianna Collins. This is a special episode of True Crime in Color. <laughs> Five-year-old Illinois State University graduate student Jelani Day dreamed of becoming a doctor. He was attending ISU in Bloomington, Illinois to get his master's degree in speech pathology. Education was clearly important to Jelani. Here's his mother Carmen again in that CNN interview. Him and my youngest daughter, they both um, uh, were going, are going to be doctors. Dr. Jelani Day. Dr. Zaina Day, they, they have this co competition with each other to make sure their GPAs stay up. Before attending ISU, Jelani graduated from Alabama A&M University, a historically black university in 2018, and was a member of the historically black fraternity Omega Psi Phi. Jelani's sisters say he was funny. He was always cracking jokes, and he knew what to say or do to make them laugh. His mother, Carmen, writes in a Facebook post that he was always the one to stand out, and he loved life. He's a leader, and Jelani is kind and caring, and he's very smart. He's very strong. He's somebody that everybody likes to be around. So according to Jelani's family, it just wasn't like him to disappear and not tell anyone where he was going. Here's Carmen speaking in an interview with reporter Chase Howell. Chase has been following Jelani's story since the beginning and contributed to much of the reporting in this episode. She spoke to Chase while Jelani was still missing. Because it hurts really bad because I don't know where my baby is. I don't know if he ate. Because like I said, Jelani likes to eat. He, I don't know. Jelani gets cold. When he gets cold, he break out in hives. I don't know if he's warm. I don't know nothing. Here's a timeline of Jelani's last contact with family all the way up until his body was identified. This was pieced together by the family, ISU staff, and police. Jelani was last in contact with his family Monday, August 23rd. His mother, Carmen, remembers the very last time she saw him. Jelani came in the house. He gave me a hug. He was like, hey, mama. Me and him sat down. 
He laid down on the couch. He was going to watch TV. I was looking through mail. I'm asking him what he was doing, where he was going, and he was going to stay all night at the house because he didn't want to drive back to Bloomington that night. The next day, Tuesday, August 24th, a surveillance camera at ISU Student Center captured Jelani walking at around 7.20 a.m. Jelani has on a blue collared dress shirt, black pants, a black belt, black dress shoes, and a blue face covering. Later on that same day, there are more surveillance camera images of Jelani from a Bloomington marijuana dispensary called Beyond Hello. That footage was captured at 9.12 a.m. In these pictures, he's wearing a blue Detroit Lions baseball hat, a black Jimi Hendrix shirt, light-colored shorts, and black shoes. Jelani's car was also seen in the parking lot. That's the last known place that he stopped. Two days after that, Thursday, August 26th, Jelani's white Chrysler was found in a wooded area in Peru, Illinois. That's about an hour away from Bloomington. Here's what Jelani's mother says happened after the car was found. Um, August 26th, um, I wanted searches done. They, be prior to me getting to the spot where his car was found, um, they told me that night, we've already done an extensive search and we've had this search crew come in. Um, it just didn't seem right to me. So that Saturday, I had to organize my own search. Police say they found the clothes Jelani was wearing in the dispensary inside the car. On September 4th, nine days after finding the car, police found a body on the bank of the Illinois River. Initially, police said it could take days or maybe even weeks to identify that body, but didn't say why. Jelani's mom submitted DNA, as well as Jelani's dental records, and waited, trying to remain hopeful. The coroner finally called me because I hadn't heard from him nor the po Peru police since September 4th. <laughs> they called me. He had finally gotten dental records that I had given him information to get back on September 6th of my son and told me he finally obtained dental records um, September 21st and he he called me he had such enthusiasm he said Carmen I found we've got dental records for your son and I said well you had me take a DNA to identify for this body so don't we wait for the DNA because you told me that the DNA was the important part because this body was so decomposed. He said to me, do you want to know if this is your son or not? They were so rude to me. They asked me to come there on Friday, which me and my family did. Then they read us the results. Now, suddenly after 20 something odd days, they now have the DNA results. They now have the dental. See, I was told over a week ago they didn't have the solution to process the DNA. I would have to wait longer. If you didn't catch that, in this clip, Jelani's mom says she submitted the records September 6th. Remember, that's two days after the body was found. She says she never heard back from the coroner until September 21st. That's 15 days later. September 23rd. 2021. One month to the day Jelani's family last spoke to him, they got the news. The LaSalle County Coroner confirmed the body found in the river September 4th was Jelani. Currently, his cause of death is unknown, 
and his autopsy and toxicology reports are pending. Jelani's family is grieving, but also angry, frustrated, and filled with questions. The one on everyone's mind, what happened to Jelani Day? Jelani's mother has been critical of law enforcement since her son went missing. She's fed up with what she says police are implying happened to her child. My son wasn't involved in the streets. He wasn't a gangbanger. He wasn't nothing. But I guess if that was that could have been their narrative, then it would have been, oh, let's forget about him. But he was he was a productive citizen. I raised a good young man. And somebody did this to him. And then they sat there yesterday when they read those results to me and they given me their reports. They implied that Jelani drove himself to Peru, parked his car in this wooded area, walked himself down to this bank and stripped his clothes and got in this water. My son knows how to swim. My son wouldn't have done this. He, he was not depressed. He wasn't nothing wrong with him. While Jelani was missing, his family and others who followed his story noticed Jelani did not receive as much attention as someone else who was missing at the same time. Detectives all over the country are now involved in this missing persons case as the search continues for Gabby Petito. Young white travel blogger Gabby Petito was reported missing while on a cross-country trip with her fiancé on September 11th. In that time frame, her case dominated headlines and captivated true crime buffs on social media almost immediately. The FBI joined the search for her and millions waited to hear the outcome. This is what Jelani's mother, Carmen, had to say about the differences in an interview with reporter Chase Howell before Jelani's body was identified. The same efforts that I feel like the press, the FBI, and the police, that they were put toward this young white lady, they should put toward that same effort toward my young black son. Now, right before Jelani's body was identified, his story began to pick up steam on social media and was picked up by more national outlets. But it took weeks. There are now thousands of posts. If you search Find Jelani Day or What Happened to Jelani Day on Instagram, celebrities like rapper Lizzo shared a TikTok about Jelani's story. More than 15,000 people are awaiting updates on the Find Jelani Day Facebook page. That number grows every day. Carmen says Gabby and her family don't deserve any less attention or any fewer resources. She just thinks Jelani deserved more. It's just a job for them at this point. It's not a job for me. This is my son. This is somebody that I love and I care about his well-being. And I'm sure if it was their child, if it there was their son or daughter, they wouldn't just be sitting on their hands. Reporter Chase Howell spoke with Dennis Hawking, the commander of investigation at the Peru Police Department, when Jelani was still missing. He said law enforcement was working hard to find Jelani and will continue to work hard to solve the case. Chase asked the commander outright if race had anything to do with the way Jelani's case was being handled. Gabby was found in 10 days. It's now been 29 days since Jelani has been missing. Do you feel that if Jelani was white, he would have gotten a different set of attention put on him and the investigation could have wrapped up sooner? It doesn't matter who the person is that's missing. We, we follow up on it, you know, to the best of our ability. We're following up everything that we receive. And I know as well as Bloomington, you know, the other agencies, LaSalle County Sheriff's Department. But Chase believes race absolutely played a factor here. What I've learned as a white male, a white cis male, I will emphasize, is how privileged white people really are in this situation. Because you saw at a moment's notice, 10 days 
went by, search party after search party was given to the Gabby Petito case. And I don't want it to be confused. Her case matters as well. But why didn't Jelani's mean the, mean the same as that? And the only answer is the racial disparity inside law enforcement, inside our culture, and as we see almost every day. And it was at the forefront when I was interviewing this mother, and it was heart-wrenching. I asked Chase why Gabby may have received the national attention so quickly, but not Jelani. But I think what we do in the media is we like to tell a story. And Gabby had a story. Gabby, people knew Gabby was a victim of her boyfriend's discretion, allegedly. This has not been confirmed. We do not know that yet. But I, and Jelani, he was just known as a missing person. And I feel like us as humans enjoy a story with a heart-wrenching, oh my gosh, this is insane type of message. Also, Gabby was a young, pretty, white female. And that is something that, for whatever reason, the nation goes to and turns to and wants to focus on versus the black ISU grad student but don't get it confused because let's say Jelani was other, something other than a great person. They would have loved to paint that portrait of him. And my job as a journalist and my job as a human being is to give the same coverage of a person of color. The Day family, not the only black family right now frustrated with law enforcement in a missing persons case. 24-year-old Daniel Robinson has been missing out of Arizona for three months. His father hired a private investigator and put together his own team of volunteers when he felt police weren't making enough progress. And the disparity between the number of missing white people and missing people of color in America and the way their cases are handled is glaring. The FBI's National Crime Information Center has a list of active missing persons. At the end of 2020, there were almost 90,000 people on that list. Black and Native people made up a huge majority of the cases, more than their share of the population. According to 2020 FBI data, Black people make up 35% of missing persons reports, but only 13% of the U.S. population. White people make up 54% of missing persons reports, 76% of the U.S. population. Jelani's family writes in a statement they still don't know what happened to him, and they won't stop until they do. It goes on to say the family learned new evidence has been discovered and police are working new leads. The case is not closed, the investigation not over. But still a lot of questions remain. If Jelani was last seen August 24th, what happened in between that time and September 4th when his body was found at the banks of the Illinois River? How did his body end up in that river? Why were his clothes found inside his car? His mother says other clothes were found by the bank of the river that were Jelani's. Why? As Chase continues to investigate the story of Jelani's disappearance and death, he has his own questions. Why did it take so long to identify this body? Why aren't we getting the fingerprints that Miss Bolden, uh, Miss Bolden talked to me about off Jelani's car? Where are those at? Where, where is the extra mile that they can go with these phones and the technology that we have today? We can see that kind of stuff. You can't tell me that somewhere, some way, we can't go into data that was Jelani's phone to get answers. You can't tell me that he wanted to kill himself, so he stripped down butt naked on a summer day and went into a lake to kill himself. You, that doesn't make sense to me. I think there's more to see when this autopsy comes out, that there was a lot more to the story. I believe something happened to Jelani Day.
and they need to be more open about it. That's why he says he'll keep pushing for answers. We need representation of people of color in the media. People of color matter. Jelani Day matters. Not just the white, cis, male or female in the world. It's not right. I think Jelani's disappearance and death has made a lot of people of color, myself included, question, who would care if I went missing? I think what Ms. Bolden said was really powerful when I sat down and interviewed her was, Jelani is not nobody. Jelani is someone's brother. Jelani is someone's cousin. Jelani is someone's son. Jelani is someone's friend. These are moments that you need to look at and ask yourself, what if my friend went missing? What if my brother went missing? It'll never happen to me. Well, that's what she thought. And look what happened. So we need representation in the media. We need people to keep looking and asking questions and just moving. And for people of color that are missing, people of color that are continually looked over. Bloomington police admit Jelani was missing under unusual and suspicious circumstances. That's exactly why Jelani's family continues to ask anyone with information to come forward. You can contact Bloomington police at 309-820-8888. You can also contact Detective Paul Jones at 309-434-2548 or at pjones at cityblm.org. Or you can reach out to the private investigator the family has hired. That number, 618-223-0044. Jelani's family continues to offer a $25,000 reward for information. All of this, the phone numbers, as well as pictures, resources, a link to the family's GoFundMe can be found on truecrimeincolorpod.com. This is a developing story and details are being updated rapidly. For the latest, you can check the family's Find Jelani Day Facebook page. And once again, special thanks to reporter Chase Howell for his collaboration and contribution to this episode. We'll be right back.